and welcome back to Unpopular People. We believe that listening and learning from each other is key for personal development and success. Today in our interview, Emanuela from Canada. She's originally from Canada, but she studies medicine at Griffiths University in Queensland, Australia. You will find out more about her in this interview and all the show notes about this episode on our website www.unpopularpeople.com. On our website, you can also find a shop where you can buy clothes to represent our Unpopular People community. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter, which you will find on www.unpopularpeople.com. And now enjoy this amazing interview with Emanuela. Hello, Emanuela. How are you? Um, we hope you had a good day. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. And um, we always start um, with the, like the, our first question in our podcast is always the same, just to give our listeners a brief idea about who you are. So where were you born and how did you grow up? Thank you for having me on your show today. Um, so I was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, um, a city in the prairies in Canada. I lived there for less than a year um, before my parents and I moved to Australia. Um, so there we lived in Melbourne for about two years. And my sister was born in Melbourne. And then as soon as my sister was born, we moved back to Winnipeg. Um, so my dad got another job teaching at the university there. And then we moved to Vancouver <laughs> um, in British Columbia, which is also in Canada, but in the West. Um, much more beautiful than Winnipeg, but still love Winnipeg, of course. Um, and then we moved back to Winnipeg, um, where we were there for... I don't remember exactly when we moved. I must have been around four or five years old. And then I completed kindergarten to grade four there. And then we moved to Calgary, Alberta um, in the mountains. And I completed the rest of my schooling there, um, graduated from high school. And then from there, I've sort of been hopping around um, doing university um, in different places because I've just been so used to not being in one place at the same time or at once. So I just have got used to moving around a lot. And why did you decide to move back to Australia? Did you move back on your own for your studies or did you move with your family as well? Um, so a little bit of background, I guess. Um, my undergraduate degree is in medical biochemistry and I completed that in British Columbia, um, a city called Kelowna. And After completing that, I thought that I wanted to pursue medicine. Um, and I'm sure many people know medicine is sort of difficult to get into um, in most places, but especially in Canada, because there aren't a lot of medical schools there. And then also the number of medical places there are quite low. Um, so I applied and I didn't get in. So I ended up doing my master's of science in neuroscience. And after completing that, Or during completing that, um, I was living a away from home again. Um, so I was in Edmonton in Alberta. And I, I guess at that point, I was used to living away from my family. Um, so I had it in my head that I would love to move elsewhere for medical school. Um, and Australia is very similar to Canada in a lot of ways. Um, and... I've also previously lived here before. So I thought, you know what, let me like apply. Um, and I actually applied one um, cycle and I didn't get accepted. I got an interview here, but um, didn't get an offer. And then I applied to the subsequent year, which was last year during COVID. And I got an interview again. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't feel like that interview went super great. So I was like, oh no, here I go again. What am I going to do? Um, and then I got... I think it was in December that I got my interview offer and I had to, I had less than three weeks to pack up all my stuff and move out here to Australia. 
Um, and so to answer your question, I moved out here alone <laughs> and I think I underestimated how far it is and how far away I am from my family. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. It's been very different from all the other times that I've moved away for school because I'd always be able to go home for the weekend or like middle of the week, just like hop on the highway and drive down or hop on a flight. But now not so easy. It's a long journey. And also because of COVID that also adds an additional barrier. But yeah, so I'm here like alone, but it's been really good so far. So yeah, I, I will have many, many questions about neuroscience and uh, <laughs> along the way, but um, um, I, I have to hold back for now. <laughs> I will ask first, um, so you said you have a sister that was born in Australia, in Melbourne. Do you have any other siblings? And um, also let us know a little bit more about your parents. Why did they move from place to place all the time? <laughs> um, yes, so I have my sister who is a year and a half, almost two years younger than me. And then I have another, br uh, not, not another brother. Ah, sorry. <laughs> and then I have a brother also. He's younger um, and he is four years younger than me. He was actually born in Vancouver. Um, fun fact, my brother and I share the same birthday. <laughs> yeah, so my fourth birthday I spent in a hospital parking um, garage waiting for him to be popped out. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if it was a present or not. It's just because ever since turning four, I've had to share my birthday. So uh, I didn't love that growing up, but <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. What was your other question? <laughs> yeah. First of all, I hope you get along now and you don't have to share your presence anymore. But um, the other question was um, what, uh, like, why did your parents move around so much? Yeah. Um, so a little bit of background about my parents, I guess. Um, they were both born and raised in Ghana, which is in West Africa. Um, and my dad, he's the smartest person I know. Um, so he had an opportunity to move to Winnipeg, um, I think right after him and my mom got married, um, to complete his PhD. So he initially moved by himself um, to complete that schooling. And then my mom eventually was able to get her, I guess, visa to move to Canada as well. And when he completed his PhD, or just before he completed his PhD, he got a job offer in Australia um, as a professor. So he took that opportunity, um, and then my mom was like, I guess, along to come for the ride. <laughs> um, and her, um, or her experience, she was a teacher, she trained as a teacher. Um, so she... I think her initial idea was that she was going to pr um, proceed doing that wherever they were. Um, and I guess it's quite difficult depending on the qualifications and what your training is in other countries when you move to Western countries such as Canada or Australia or the U.S. really. Um, so she wasn't, that didn't directly translate. So she decided instead of teaching, she was going to do um, early child development and child care essentially um and so that's what she did in australia she did not love it <laughs> um and so from there and then also i think she had a really hard time adjusting in australia because when they were in winnipeg um she has an uncle that lives there so there was still some family and there's quite a large community to support them um and then being in australia not necessarily alone, but with like a significantly smaller support network. And then having, I guess, having me, a small child, and then she was pregnant, and then to have my sister as well, it was just a lot because my dad was always working as like a new professor. Um, so I think it was truly her like unhappiness or, yeah, her unhappiness um, that led to my dad looking at other job opportunities that were back home or in Winnipeg. Um, so that's what led to moving from Australia to back to Winnipeg. And then I'm not quite sure why we moved from Winnipeg to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure why we moved back from Vancouver to Winnipeg. I've never asked my parents that. It's something that I <laughs> should maybe ask. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah, so we were in Winnipeg for a long time after the move from Vancouver. So it was my sister, my brother, and I. And then, of course, like, um, my mom's uncle, who, like, I call grandpa and, like, grandma. So, like, we had, like, a lot of family out there. And then my mom 
started to go to school actually when we were in Winnipeg. I think maybe that's part of what took us or made us spend so much time there. Um, she went back to school for nursing, so she became a registered nurse, mm -hmm. which was quite interesting to do with three young children. And this was probably back in like 2004, 2000, actually no, like let's say years 2000 to 2004, where like to use the internet, you'd have to unplug the phone and then do like the dial up and like, so we didn't have iPads to keep us distracted. <laughs> so we were just like always bothering her. So she was studying in the late night. Then I remember there were nights where like my sister and I would be like in bed just giggling and laughing. My mom would be like, I'm trying to study. And then we just like, oh, we were total menaces, um, but it's okay. One good thing was my mom's mom. So my grandma from Ghana was able to come. And so she helped her out with that because my dad moved to Calgary. <laughs> so. I think it was in the last year or so of my mom's degree, my dad got a job offer in Calgary for an oil and gas firm. Um, and that was like during a big boom in Alberta. So I guess a very good opportunity. Um, and the plan was for when she was to finish school, we would all move over there. Um, so that was what I guess instigated the move from Winnipeg to Calgary. And I remember like so like strongly when we moved to Winnipeg, or when we moved to Calgary, sorry, my parents were having this conversation. My dad's like, oh yeah, like I got a job offer in Seattle. And like, I overheard that. And I was like, I don't care what you do. I'm not moving again. We, we've been here for a year. We're not moving to Seattle. Like, I don't care if you get a million dollars an hour, like we're done. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know if that was what did it, but we stayed in Calgary for the rest of time. But yeah, so really it was just like, job opportunities and I guess just like personal and professional development and growth of my parents that caused us to move around so much. That sounds really tough for your mom especially but also for you and your um, siblings. So what did you learn um, from back then from your mom? So what kind of uh, advice also can you give to other people? What you learned for yourself? How to handle it? To move so often from places to places and to get along and uh, to all all the circumstances when everything is new. Um, I was actually talking to my mom yesterday and I was complaining about, I think I might have been complaining about people getting stressed over group work, <laughs> over the group project we're working on. And she was like, oh, like, I know you're like very good at handling stress, you know, like, and you're like very good at like meeting new people and understanding their different backgrounds and stuff like that. And she's like, that's why we moved around so much. And I was like, I don't think that's why you, we moved to like, it wasn't for character development, but it worked out that way. Um, so I think one of the main things that I've learned and like carry with me from moving so much um, is that everyone has like a different story, different experiences. And also like people who do have the same experiences, they experience them differently, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like, Comparing, let's say, even my sister and I, like, we have very different personalities. Um, but we, you would think that we've ide ideally gone through the exact same things. She's a lot more closed off and, like, it takes a longer time for her to, like, open up to people. Whereas for me, I think I'm able to open up easier. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but... Yeah, so I think that's one big thing is just to like be open and like everyone experiences things differently and reacts to things differently. And sometimes it can be annoying or frustrating, but it's important to like try to understand um, things from the other side, even if you don't know what they're going through, what they've gone through. I think just benefit of the doubt is there's a reason for everyone's actions and reactions. Um, and then from my mom, I think I learned how to persevere um, and really fight for what, what you want. Um, so like her doing nursing with three young kids, like that's a four year degree, holy moly. I don't know if I personally could or would do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, Like, I guess moving out here, I'm just like, oh, like sometimes like some days kind of suck, but I'm just like, you know what? I did want to be here. This was like, like looking on the bright side, 
I've wanted this. I've been working so hard towards this. I was like on like down days. I have to remind myself there were days I was so excited to move to Australia to study medicine, to meet new people, have new experiences. Um, it's not always going to be peachy. There's going to be some more blue days and that's okay. Yeah, well, I mean, you studied uh, neuroscience <laughs> and you're studying medicine now, so you turned out well. Um, uh, what about uh, your siblings? What do they do? Um, so my sister, it's funny because I was saying we're so different. My sister, she um, did her undergraduate degree in chemistry and she is currently in the process of doing her master's of science in chemistry also. And she is hoping to um, do medicine as well. Um, we were just speaking the other day. She was like, oh yeah, I think I might want to come to Australia too. And I was like, classic. Of course you want to do it because I'm doing it. <laughs> um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's her uh, path right now. Um, and my brother, he just graduated from his Bachelor of, bachelor of something in engineering. <laughs> So he's doing electrical engineering. Um, so he's right now just like looking for a job. Um, I think he chose an excellent field because in uh, this time of technology, there's lots of opportunity for software design and hardware design and AI. So I'm kind of jealous. I wish I, I do love medicine. <laughs> and the reasons that I pursued medicine, obviously Trump, not the ease, but the excitement of the, these new technologies um but i think if i were to not do medicine i think i would have liked to go into something to do with like artificial intelligence and all that stuff i just think it seems so cool and then it also there's also links to neuroscience with ai so it's just such a fascinating topic but yeah yeah so this is also my next question what do you find so fascinating in medicine i mean it is in general of course but why is it your dream or was it always your dream to study this field unlike a lot of people <laughs> who say like oh since i was a child like i knew i did not know <laughs> yeah that was not me at all i went through lots of different phases um there's a time Like one of the more recent ones, I think it was in grade seven, we had a project we had to do to like make a vision board of what we wanted to be when we grew up. And there were people who wanted to be doctors and teachers and everything. And I wanted to be a fashion journalist. <laughs> and, I was, and I made it very clear, not a fashion designer, but a fashion journalist. And I forget why, but I think a fashion journalist had more um, freedom in their scope of practice i don't know if practice is the right term but the, their scope of work um and a lot of more like creative freedom and stuff and i don't know what i was watching at the time that i was like i was like oh i'm gonna be a fashion journalist because also looking back at those years i was not fashionable <laughs> at all <laughs> um so yeah i wanted to be a fashion journalist once and then that switched to i wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted to be a lawyer, again, because of fashion. I just loved watching people in their, like, their skirt suits and, like, just, like, their nice suits. And I was like, oh, I'd be an excellent lawyer because I would know what to wear. <laughs> um, but I have a terrible memory, <laughs> so I don't think I would be a good lawyer in that regard. Um, so eventually, like, that changed. And I, was, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do during high school. Um, I've always liked sciences. I've always been good at math. So I was just like, worst comes to worst. Like I'll go to school, like get my degree in science. I don't know what that's going to get me, but that's not, that's a later problem. Um, and then it was in grade 11 where I was doing, um, we were doing biology and admittedly I'm a very bad student. I'm not gonna lie. My studying habits are very bad. I'm a procrastinator. Um, <laughs> it's very, it's very bad. <laughs> That's a confession. Um, <laughs> but there was we did what topic? We did neurobiology, and I was just absolutely fascinated. And I just like had a knack for it. And I was like, what can I do with neuroscience and neurobiology? Like. This is just so cool to me. And then so like 
Upon learning more, I was like, oh, you know what? Like, I want to do something with neurology. And then eventually it just clicked that medicine was the path that I wanted to take because I am, I love the brain. And then also I like, I love interacting with people and like. We're taking a quick break and be right back into the show. We love interacting with people too. If you like to interact with us and our Unpopular People community, visit our website www.unpopularpeople.com and sign up for our newsletter to join. Now back to the show. Helping people as cliche as that sounds. And so medicine just became like the clear path for me. I did consider psychology, but then I... Because of the neuro-specific aspect, that wasn't fully encompassing of that. So I was looking towards psychiatry, and then when I started doing my master's, I was like, oh, neuro, like neuro, neurology, yeah. <laughs> well, so many neuro words, <laughs> neurology. Um, and then there was a time where I was like, oh, I'm going to be a neurosurgeon. I don't know about that anymore. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of work, a lot of time. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, Just a, yeah. So I think that's like what brought me to medicine. It wasn't a clear cut path. I, yeah, it wasn't a clear cut path, but it was the right path for me to get to where I am now, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's uh, very impressive. Um, I mean, there's a procrastinator in everyone, so um, that's you're not unique with this. Uh, like, I think um, everyone has their times in, in life where you start finding things for yourself and what's the right choice. So, um, I mean, like going through so many different aspects of university, also in different countries, I mean, it's still the Commonwealth, but um, uh, like, do you experience um, a big difference between the universities in Canada and universities in Australia? Um, a little bit, but they're all like little, like trivial differences. I think, um, the main one is, I think the main, the main differences are like the terms that we use and also the periods of study. Um, so for example, like in Canada, we say like, oh, like semester, but here it's trimester and like just like little trivial things like that um but one big difference that i'm like getting used to which isn't super specific to school but just like being and living in the southern hemisphere is um like right now we are in what month is it may we're in may and it's considered spring and we're just about to enter or it's considered fall and we're just about to enter winter but i'm used to the opposite so i'm just like people are like oh like it's winter winter semester um and it does not feel like winter <laughs> and also i'm used to winter being like december um but with in terms of like the teaching um i think i haven't been able to get a very good grasp of what teaching looks like in australia just because i came during COVID times so all my lectures are online there's just a few things that we have in person whereas when i was back home um for both my undergrad and my um, graduate studies, everything was in person. Um, so there was more opportunity to interact with your professors if you need, needed to just like pop into the office hours and stuff, which it's still available here. But if you're, if you're, if you're hardly on campus, there's not too much of a motivation to go um, talk to your professors if that's the case like if that's necessary um you can just shoot them an email and they'll respond when they have the time and then also another big thing is getting to know my cohort so because of covid they split us up into three um and so there's still people that i'm meeting every day that i like have never seen before that are in their first year of medicine also um so A lot of the th differences that I've noticed aren't necessarily because we're in Australia, but because of the pandemic. But mm -hmm. yeah. And what do you think or um, realize um, are there advantages or disadvantages that everything is online or changed to more online now? Personally, I like that lectures are on are online. Um, And the main reason I like that is because they're also recorded. So you can watch a lecture and then you can go back to watch it. Or you could not watch a lecture when at five or not 5 a.m. 
ugh, at 9 a.m., mm-hmm. but you could watch it later at like 1, 1 p.m. <laughs> My times are off. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you could, you know, you can like really adjust your schedule to suit you. Um, I know a lot of people that are still working now, whereas previously it would, it would be super difficult to balance the schedule with a work schedule. Um, so I think it provides a greater opportunity for just having more flexibility with what you want to do with your time. And also it's a, it can be a lot more effective. Um, and so I personally like having that online. And then we do have some in-person aspects, which are good. So like communication skills where we get to practice um, if we were to be on the wards um, or in a GP clinic. Um, and then just a couple other things. We have problem-based learning, which is in small groups. Um, so I think there's ben- definitely benefits to it, but then I know that a lot of other people would prefer having in-person um, in-person lectures. So I think it just depends on like what you value and how you learn best and if you need like a super strict regime or if you can just like ebb and flow your way through it and because it is a lot of self-directed learning this way also. But Yeah, but I also think it's good to have the choice between both so you can pick uh, the day when you want to go or if you want to stay at home sometimes it's also uh, more convenient so neuroscience <laughs> i was waiting for this so i mean um, for me it's it's so fascinating that we know um, so much about the universe and the moon and the stars and all around us but we carry this thing in our heads um, that we can't really tell like why do we know those things and how does it work that we can you know like interact and uh, like the, the whole mystery about our brain is just so incredible so i think it's a very fascinating um topic and um so what uh, direction do you want to go with neuroscience if you want to go further down that path like more in a cognitive way or like which way do you want to go uh I think you like hit the hammer on the head. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right euphem, the nail, <laughs> the nail on the head. That's the right euphemism. <laughs> you knew what I meant. You knew what I meant. Because um, <laughs> uh, it is um, and a complete mystery. We don't know much about the brain at all, um, which is part of why it is so fascinating. Um, so that being said, there's like so many different avenues when it comes to neuroscience of where you can explore. Like previously when we we're talking about like AI and how the brain can be mapped, or I guess I think someone is trying to map the brain, Elon Musk, and what that means for cognition or for disease or for development or for so many different things. Um, personally, I am very interested in cognition and neuroplasticity. So how our brains are able to react and adjust to trauma and how different compensatory mechanisms to overcome trauma or like misconnections. And when I say trauma, like not necessarily just physical trauma, whether that's surgery or concussion, but like even emotional trauma and then you know how like your brain can sort of like lock consolidate memories and just like lock things away like how does that work and why why what like how, how does our brain know to protect us and what like what triggers that's just there's just so many questions um but in my master's um i was studying parkinson's disease so i'm also very fascinated with neurodegeneration um and how or why it occurs there's just i there's just so many questions um but in my studies i was looking at a particular gene um in i guess in all our mitochondrial cells and it's been found that there's certain mutations within this gene that result in faulty protein and then this faulty protein has been found to cause an accumulation of this protein in the brain and it's not the It's not super known. Um, and so I was just studying, yeah, how this protein could lead to the p- pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease, or is it a result of Parkinson's disease? Like, there's just so many questions that we don't have the answer to. There's also questions we don't even know to ask. Um, 
yeah so i really am interested in neurodegeneration also um not necessarily just parkinson's disease but like alzheimer's disease as well uh, multiple sclerosis just just anything and everything because it's absolutely insane to me how something as small as like proteins that we can't really see in the brain can cause us to lose uh, yeah to do like to lose anything like to lose our ability to move or our ability to remember our ability to communicate with people it's just absolutely insane to me so there's just a lot we don't know and a lot there's a lot to learn (laughs) Yeah, and also, um, I mean, like all the things we do subconsciously, everything like um, like now how you pass the microphone to me without even thinking about like your hand moving over to this direction, how Elisa just picked up the glass and had a sip of water, you know, without even, you know, like the water goes into your mouth and it just like kind of disappears, you know, it's like goes into like a black hole <laughs> sitting like, uh, I mean, uh, maybe it's an illusion sitting on top of your throat, you know, we, you don't really know. So there's like so many questions questions around this it's really great that you go into this field like uh, me personally i want to go the same way down and it's also very interesting that um we have uh elisa and i uh, we have friends from calgary um, and we have friends from uh, brandon which is very close to winnipeg as well that's roger and serena you can listen to them in uh, season two of our podcast and um yeah so thank you very much for giving us um this insight in in um in your studies and everything so what is your long-term goal with all of this i mean you explain that you want to find out a lot of things do you want to go into research or do you um, uh, want to go into you said you thought about getting, like doing neurosurgery but you, I think you gave this up but uh, what is your long term goal oh, my long term goals uh, I'm not sure I'm sort of just going along with the flow um, one thing even though I do love neuro and I am absolutely fascinated by it I do also want to keep an open mind because the other body systems are also fascinating in different ways. Um, A weird body system, so the gastrointestinal tract, which before my undergrad, I'd be like, oh, like, why does that matter? Who cares about the stomach and all that stuff? The gut? Ugh. Um, (laughs) But then there's one course, my microbiology course in my undergrad, our professor, she um, did research on the flora, so the bacteria in our gut, and how it has such so many links to, it has links to our brain, it has links to like our metabolism, it has, it has links to everything. So I think there's still a lot of different body systems that have a lot of promise in research. And also, as time goes on and as we learn more we're gonna start to know how significant some of these things that we never really thought about really are um so i want to keep an open mind and just see if i am swayed towards any other direction even though i do have my eye on nero and even me mentioning the gi tract like i brought nero into it so i'm definitely bias towards it um but yeah so long term in terms of what route i want to take i'm not quite sure i'm just gonna leave it open see what it see what happens um and in terms of research i do believe i want to i do think i want to do research i do want think i want to be a clinician um just because my experience doing my master's was so good um my supervisor was an amazing support especially because i had no Um, research experience before Um, so that was really eye-opening to the world of research and what that means and where like where that can take us Um, it's just a matter of I guess opportunity maybe Um, and then if like there's a project that is compelling enough for me to want to take it yeah i don't know my long term (laughs) i'm just like looking into the abyss but i think like long term i don't really even know what i'm gonna do tomorrow so (laughs) long term i'm not quite sure but i'm i'm open to most things um i think is the short answer to that and do you like to stay in australia or do you want to go back to canada one day i'm not sure yet (laughs) that's another thing um My family believes that I'm going to stay here. 
um as soon as i got accepted they're like oh she's moving to australia we're never going to see her again um but i don't know if that's necessarily the case i think it depends on like a number of factors um what graduation like looks like if i'm deciding to intern here if i want to go intern somewhere else to specialize in something groundbreaking who knows um and then also depending on like personal life stuff if I meet somebody or, you know, just stuff like that. So it totally depends. Um, totally up in the air. Kind of like my long-term goals. Just anything that comes my way, I think I'll just take it in stride. And um, I have two questions, but you can answer them together. So um, how old are you? And um, what advice can you give others in your age? <laughs> That's a big question. Um, so I'm 26 years old and turning 27 in September. I thought you were very young. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> what advice can you give others in your age? With <laughs> How old did you think I was? I mean, from all the studies uh, you've done, you know, like the, you look at a person and you think like, oh, she looks quite young. But um, uh, from all the studies you've done, I'm like, I wasn't really sure anymore. So <laughs> that's why I got confused. And that's why I think like, uh, okay, she must be very like young and did all the studies. So um, what advice can you give others if they like struggling with university or if they're struggling with finding something? And also like um, you, like what gives you the confidence to move on, even if you don't have long term plans? Because a lot of people, especially Especially nowadays with the whole world change within a year completely um, and you can't make long-term plans anymore there was like a trick question <laughs> so um, uh, they, they're struggling with this so um, what advice can you give others to stay relaxed as you are I think I will say I am super lucky to have such a good support system um, my family is incredible my friends are incredible and that definitely is a major contributor to being able to roll with the punches i guess um advice that i would give other 26 years old six year years old year old sorry ah yes other 26 year olds <laughs> um is to i feel like it's naive to say this i'm gonna say this and then add a caveat to it um but really find the people that you can rely on um And don't take them for granted, but they're there to support you. So if you need to lean on them, don't be afraid to. But at the same time, you have to remember to be able to be that person for them as well, because it's not easy for everybody. Um, and I know that, so the caveat is I know not everyone has people that are such big supporters or such very close to them in their lives. Um, and I think that advice sort of goes the same, but for yourself, I think you first and foremost are the one person that can support you. You, you know you best. Um, if you're able to, <laughs> this is gonna sound so hippy dippy, <laughs> but if you can like look within yourself and like find ways to like keep your peace Everything happens for a reason. I'm such a big believer in that. And sometimes are going to be tough and then other times will eventually be better. You just have to try and keep pushing forward and take it day by day instead of instead of looking forward to what you want to accomplish and staying fixated on that. Just take it day by day, one step at a time. And some of those steps are going to be sideways or backwards and that's okay. Um, but it's just important to like, introspectively know who you are what you want to achieve and you can achieve it you just have to you just have to do it and it's not going to happen overnight just relax and whatever will be will be and like we're in a pandemic <laughs> like things are crazy so try to keep your bubble as little crazy as possible and um how do you handle setbacks or when you have days when i think everyone has them when you're really down and you think like oh how can i handle all this how do you bring yourself back in this mood you just described that you believe in yourself and in that it's right what you're doing um so personally i have personal days all the time so if i'm down and i need to spend the day in bed crying i will do that and i think part of that like part of what i mentioned before is being able to 
allow yourself to be sad or to grieve or to be upset because that is a valid feeling. Um, it's such a valid feeling. And so you need to be able to let yourself live in that. And then no one wants to feel sad all the time. So being able to like find the light at the end of the tunnel and it can be hard and it not can be, it is hard because also once you like, again, speaking personally, but like once I'm in like the pits, it's just, I'm just like, I don't, I can't see up. I'm just like, oh, like just, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper and you like cry and cry. Oh, but if you need to like nap or like whatever it is that like if you need a day if you need two days take it I think that's my advice it is important to respect yourself to allow yourself to feel bad so that eventually you can feel good again I don't know if that answered that question yeah that's really good I think it's really motivational speak so <laughs> thank you for this <laughs> that's a good advice I think yeah I have a question uh, another <laughs> of course I have a question I, I'm, I'm doing a podcast here so <laughs> you're asking questions <laughs> um, yeah but I, I was wondering um, do you think we have um, and now we go really deep do you think we have free will and do you think we should have a conversation about free will in general follow-up question on your question free will as individuals or like as a society what do you mean by free will as an individual i do think we have free will i think that's a very complicated question um that's why i asked the second question do you think we should have this conversation or do you think it's not necessary nowadays i think it depends on who you encounter to be honest um because it's such a multifaceted question it brings in It can bring in spirituality, it can bring in religion, it can bring in science, cosmic, everything, anything. And so if you were to ask this question to someone who just likes to play the devil's advocate and just it's like, like, I don't know. It depends on who you ask, but I think it is a great question to ask the right people because it opens you up to new perspectives a new ideas and new concepts. And I think it's interesting to see how people's lives and experiences shape what they believe in terms of free will and if we have it or it, like what extent of free will we do have. Um, but I think that's a very complicated but interesting question. So I think it is a good conversation to have if you have the time, because it's also a massive conversation. Um, it can, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I think it is a great conversation to have, just depends on who with. And then also, if you want to have that conversation, like have it with like an open mind, be able to say what you think, how you feel, your experiences, and also be open to listening to um, the other side or whoever else is talking about it just a little bit of follow-up question why i asked this because we had um uh, two episodes ago um three episodes ago sorry mm -hmm. we had um, someone on the show and i asked the same question it was um, a very religious person and um, i was just wondering um your point of view on this and also if you have this space for spirituality in your life yeah so i'm actually catholic um but i am not I feel like I'm not the traditional or stereotypical, air, and I'm using air quotes, um, Catholic in that my beliefs and behaviors are not often aligned directly with the church, if that makes sense. Um, so I, I guess I'm religious, but I would like... I usually say I'm more spiritual than religious because I do believe in God, but then there's things that are taught and spoken about in the church that I don't agree with. So I know I don't, and I also don't know if I'm just like disconcerting it to myself to like make myself feel better. But like I was like, my parents um, raised me in like a very like spiritual household like we pray every time I talk to my mom she's like don't forget your prayers I'm like, I won't <laughs> um but yeah so that definitely influences um my interactions with others um with people and also like it does contribute to my ideas so that's why I didn't quite 
answer your free will question <laughs> because you know what i'm actually not sure i do think we have free will but there's like so many different like I don't know. There's just so many different things and also how that relates to religion and like also Catholicism versus Christianity and what that means, what free will truly looks like. And it's a whole conversation, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you very much. So, um, and also like to um, bring more light into <laughs> into what I was just, uh, why I asked um, all of this is because um, like I see many people struggling with those things um if like free will yes no um again do we need to have this conversation yes no it's a it's an like good question because sometimes it's unnecessary you know we have this life we live in this reality so do we really need to speak about this like even if it feels like free will if it's free will or not doesn't matter in the end so um but also um, with belief because i think it plays a big um, role in many people's lives and um, i think it's the hardest one to find you know um, even if you're an atheist um, or agnostic you seem to be a bit agnostic as well so um, it's um, it's difficult sometimes on both sides being a christian being an, uh, an atheist or a muslim or buddhist whatever um so i just was wondering um what advice can you give someone that's looking for like the way to find something like this especially from we ha heard like from a person that was re religious and uh, now from you um with this neuroscience background and knowing how things kind of work you know and knowing all the science behind it that um start to explain like consciousness and the brain and uh, and and um like how everything is connected and there's like everything has a reason and stuff like this so um how do you uh, how what advice could you give people to find their belief in in their personal life <laughs> that's a yeah that is a very deep question um i think it oh i don't know i think it depends on the Ah. <laughs> the inter like for me I think it depends on the interactions people have with others or like everyone has their like for me I was bo like born into Catholicism raised with Catholicism still I guess follow Catholicism um, or believe in Catholicism I'm not sure the, how to word that properly um, but like as a Catholic I have I have my yeses and my noes, if that makes sense. Like personally, I'm not speaking to, to like the Catholic church, so personally. But then um, I have a cousin who relatively recently has um, found herself in the faith of Catholicism. And I'm not exactly sure what triggered her to look more and like read more and talk to more people, but I think when I asked her, she said something along the lines of like, she was just curious because similarly, she was like, not to the same extent, but similarly, she was raised in a Catholic household, went to, or, yeah, went to a Catholic school, all that stuff. But it was just going through the motions, um, not really practicing. And so I guess one day she took it upon herself to to learn more and she is one of the most devout christians i know um and it was amazing to see her growth in that because i guess this is like sort of going back into when we were speaking um about like how do you get yourself out of like the hole when you're having a rat or a bad day or a bad couple days a bad period of time um a lot of people and me myself also i find comfort in my belief and i think it just depends if if someone's happy in the life that they're living i don't think they're going to be looking for something to believe in if they don't believe in anything um but i also know like on the flip side there's people who have had a horrible experience and they're like there's no way that there's a god or someone out there because no being would be okay with this like that would be a cruel being so like i think it is super dependent on people's life experiences and if people want to look for more and want more to believe in because if there's no desire to believe in something it's just not going to happen um i don't even know if that answered your question but okay yeah thank you so far um so our podcast name is unpopular people 
and we always ask our guests imagine you would be popular so well known all over the world imagine for example you would invent um Neuralink <laughs> yeah or like a medicine that can heal um dementia <laughs> or parkinson or whatever what um what you do with this power and what would you do with this knowledge this popularity all over the world oh that's a lot of pressure <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i you know i don't envy popular like pop culture people famous people because there's no right they can do no right and they can do no wrong at the same time um like even just in the past year or so there have been like there's been political unrest all over the world racial tension the pandemic and it's really highlighted a them versus us narrative and by them i mean like the upper class the people who like are able to rent a private island for them to party during a pandemic whereas the rest of us people are small business owners and losing money losing their family members um so one thing that i thought was really interesting dur during the pandemic in particular was a lot of the sub celebrities were like oh like just wear a mask like it's easy just wear a mask or like oh like fun ways to like try and stay excited and doing stuff at home and it's like oh but your home is like a little village <laughs> like you, you there's a lot that you can do whereas like some of us were sharing a house with however many people and we don't have room to swim in the afternoon and then have our private chef wearing a mask though because you know we're being COVID safe <laughs> to prepare us a five course meal um so i don't know if i was famous I th would try and find a way to avoid all the cliches that I see that today's famous people do. And I think it's so much easier said than done. I think if I was in it, like, I'd be like, oh, I'm doing this and this is enough. But from the other side, it just never seems to be enough. Um, if I was a popular person, I... I hope that I would be popular in helping people out in whatever way that whatever that means i don't even know what that looks like what that would be but i just hope that i wouldn't be one of the people i send messages to my cousin about saying how ridiculous does this sound like i hope that i would people would at least the mass majority of people would think that i was a helpful person Great, thank you very much. And we come to our last meaningful question. The rest is more about how people can get in touch with you. And um, we also asked um, our guests, um, if you would have a school full of kids, um, uh, what do you think is some of the most important things they should uh, learn at school? What is probably now missing in the school system all around the world? Um, I think one, And this is, again, another hippy-dippy answer. Um, <laughs> okay, perfect. Because that's, that's, that's the route I'm going. Um, one is just kindness and consideration. I think the way children are raised affects how they are as adults so much. Um, I'm sure you've encountered, like, some nightmare people. I mean, we all have. And it's just because they're just so ingrained in their own world and like their own agenda and what they have to do and not considerate about how it affects others um and so i think one thing that and i don't know what that course would be called but i think <laughs> kindness and consideration 101 <laughs> i think that's something that could really be um i don't know how but incorporated into our school systems um And then something more, I guess, tactical is taxes, because I still don't know how to do my taxes. And moving here, I'm worried about who's gonna, who's going to do them, because my dad usually does them. So I think taxes is a big thing. <laughs> And also now, I think investments would be a really good thing to teach children growing up, because it's such a huge opportunity for people. And before it was just, it was kind of an exclusive thing. Um, but now with like, the rise of cryptocurrencies and just 
the globalization of the world um, and just mass information of everything, everything we can find online. I think investments um, and how to like do that smartly could be beneficial to people um, growing up, just knowing how to do that if they want to do that, which who wouldn't because that's, it's so cool. It makes sense. But yeah, I think those are my off the top of my head the things that should be taught <laughs> cool thank you so much um how can people get in touch with you if you want yeah um the best way would probably be by instagram or email or yeah or ben or elisa um <laughs> um yeah probably through ben and elisa first because i'm just very horrible <laughs> with social media um just because I'm like, that's one of my tactics to staying like calm is just I like take my time with responding to things or if I'm like feeling overwhelmed, I I just take a step back. Um, so yeah, maybe through you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, you're part of um, our Unpopular People community now and uh, you also get... Um, in our Discord server, you get um, uh, uh, access um, to be a moderator. So um, we have a uh, Discord server where people can exchange with each other. We try to um, make this more public and, uh, you know, have people on the server uh, discussing different things. So it would be great if you become a part of this as well. Um, it's very quiet there at the moment because everyone's still on social media, but we are horrible with social media as well. So <laughs> this is the way we, we personally want to go with our company as well, um, with our project unpopular people as well and um yeah so thank you very much for your time today it's uh, really great that you took the time out of your busy studying days to come here and have this uh, interview with us and um yeah we both feel very inspired um and um so thank you very much for your time from my side i say goodbye from my side yeah thank you for my side as well we wish you all the best and for your further studies that everything goes like you like you wish to and um, yeah thank you very much for your time the interview and if you have any final words for our listeners now is the time for it thank you and bye bye so I would also like to thank you both so much for having me on the podcast today and also for making this such a pleasant experience I was so nervous <laughs> um, so this was great so thank you for that and I guess my final words to whoever is listening is um, just be proud of yourself for everything you've accomplished um, and everything you're about to accomplish that you don't even know yet. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this inspiring interview with Emanuela. If you want to find out more about her, have a look on our website www.unpopularpeople.com and sign up for our newsletter. And the community if you like. Thank you and goodbye. Bye-bye.